Okay, boys and girls, we're back with the ST6. I know yesterday, two days ago, it was working okay. Still works okay, usually. But after it's been running for X amount of time, the motor had stopped. And then the other ones are doing that. But anyway, I looked in the troubleshooting service manual, and it says if your motor stops, look for the 600 volt 0.1. Uh, 0.1 microfarad capacitor slash paper only. So I took that paper box off the outside and what is that? That is a black beauty down there. That is a paper and oil black beauty. Son of a gun. After all of the other capacitors underneath this thing were, as best I could tell, polyprops of some sort, we find one paper and oil black beauty in this stupid thing. So there it is. I'm still suspicious of the electrolytics, but uh, if anything was failure prone, it's this thing. And there it is. So, it's a 0.1 microfarad, 600 volt, and I perchance to have a 0.1 microfarad, 600 volt orange drop. So we'll put that in in place of it. And then we'll see if our motor will run for more than 15 or 20 minutes before it quits. Getting that out of there is going to suck. That's a tight quarters. Alright, talk to you in a few. Okay, boys and girls. So, the ST6 got it apart here again. Yesterday I ran it for an hour or so. After running it for an hour or so the motor stopped. And the most of the caps in here are TRWs which should be polys but in the owner's manual it talked about a 600 volt 0.1 microfarad which is that sort of reddish it looks reddish in the camera to me but it's brown. Um, good all capacitor back there. And there's a black beauty down there, which is a 0.15. Those two are paper caps. It even says it's a paper cap right in the owner's manual. But if the motor stops, they said clip that cap off and see if the motor runs again. And then if it does, then just replace it. But it's a paper cap, so we're just going to replace it. I've got a orange drop over here of the correct value, so we'll do that. I have black beauties on my hit list, but I don't think I have any 0.15s trying to do just what I need to do to keep this going because it tunes pretty accurately and there's certain caps in here that if you change them you screw the calibration up and uh, neither of these are one of those so we're going to change that one right there and we'll see if this runs for okay so more than testing now. this good all it's showing 97.83 nanofarad it's pretty close it's a little under not showing any voltage loss, but it's not obviously testing ESR, which it won't because it's not electrolytic. We'll compare that to a new one. We're changing it anyway. There's our new orange drop, 106 nanofarads. Voltage loss of one tenth of one percent. So we're going to replace it with this one. I think that good all was in failure because when it gets warm then it craps out and the motor stopping is you know the symptom is specifically said in the manual that's the cap you go after so we'll see if it works if it doesn't I probably wouldn't have posted okay, this video so old capacitor was a good all 600 volt 0.1 microfarad at 10 percent the new one is an orange drop it says 104K, that's 0.1 microfarad, at 600 volt. So at this point I think we can take this for a spin again. Huh, pun intended. I'll take it for a spin and see what happens. With some of these terminals and all of these wires gubbed in here, it's kind of difficult to get these things soldered up because to take the old one out, you know, I traditionally want to melt the solder and unhook it and da 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 da. Um, I still hate that black beauty there, but I don't have a 0.15 laying around, and that's the capacitor the manual says thou must change. Now I have other technicians that tell me, oh, the red, the red label black beauties usually don't go bad like the yellow label ones do. But then you have other technicians that say black beauties are black bombs, like bumblebees or bumble bombs. Just get rid of them. So we'll get rid of that eventually if we need to. Um, it's on my hit list, among with a lot of other ones, but uh, 
considering I don't want to throw this out of calibration, that should be the one we have the ability to change um, safely to keep the motor running. Because when this shorts out, the motor stops. So if that's got high voltage through it and it's leaking and shorting out, or you know, leaking is shorting out essentially, well, at least partially shorting out, that would cause the motor to stop. So. Oh, I mentioned this other tube before. It's CON, it says ECC81, aka 12AX7, made in Germany. I didn't see a diamond on the bottom. Whoa. Let's not drop our tube, dum dum. So, I don't see a diamond, so I don't know if this would be a Telefunken. It says made by Amperex. I didn't know Amperex made tubes in Germany. Maybe RFT. I don't know. I'm not a tube aficionado of the old school stuff. I know all the new current ones and where they come from, but eh, we'll find out. Eh, if it ain't broke, we use it, right? Okay, so it's still out of the case, but new caps in, and we'll flip the switch and see if it explodes. Okay, it didn't explode. We should get neon lights in a moment here. <clears throat> There's neon. Then we should get a spinny motor. There it goes. Okay, so we'll calibrate that to whatever, put it in operate mode. Actually it looks like looks like calibration is pretty good because that's not running away. So we'll let it get hot. We'll let this run for an hour. Generally it seemed to take about twenty minutes for it to crap out, so if it lasts an hour, I'll consider it good. Yeah, it's funny, when it's warming up, this will walk a little bit. The calibration dot will walk. I don't know if you can see it. The calibration dot is the hardest dot to see on this whole thing. It's a lot easier to see once you get them going. Yeah, it's walking. But we'll let it warm up. Alright, cool. Okay, so it's listening to an A440 reference pitch, and that looks pretty good. But it's only been two or three minutes. So we'll see you in a while. Okay, so it's been about 40 minutes-ish, and uh, our tuner still works okay, still running. Hasn't really budged in terms of the uh, calibration, so I think we're good. But uh, it's only been 45 minutes, and I said I was going to go for an hour, so I need to find something to do for a little bit. Um, I still have this capacitor that came out of it, which I'm determined was bad and should be replaced. So, I'm curious if this is paper or mylar or what this is. So, we'll grab a uh, pliers and crack the shell and see what's inside. Alright, so here's an addendum to our adventure. This is the schematic, by the way. I'll zoom out and let you see it. It's on a computer screen, so if there's any flicker, it's the computer's fault. But, it's got a really complicated array of transformer things for different tuning. Uh, I don't want to mess with that if I don't have to. Okay, so let's come over here. And the M is for motor. So, M is for motor, alright? Okay. This is the 0.1 microfarad. That's the one we put the orange drop in. The black beauty sits back here, going right there. So energy comes out of the 6AQ5s and goes into this transformer that will flash the lights. You can see we got, you know, so. Yeah, so I'm thinking that's the other one that's getting our mojo, because that one goes into the transformer. So if you ground out the transformer, then the motor isn't going to get any more mojo, because the purple wire, purple and gray wires drive the motor, and the blue and black wires are strung across that. 0.15 capacitor. So that's the Black Beauty. So if that Black Beauty is flopping, then that would explain why it stopped spinning. 
Okay, we're gonna try that. Okay, back to the rest of the video. This was recorded later. Okay, boys and girls. Um, so the one that the owner's manual told me to change, or the service manual page told me to change, was the point one up there. This black beauty is the one that really aggravates me. When we stuck this one in the tester, the good all that we pulled, um, it actually tested really close to what it's supposed to be, but that's of course not the case necessarily when it's got 600 volts on it. That black beauty is the one that's really got me suspicious at this point. I looked at where they are in the schematic. This one runs across the motor's winding and this one runs across the windings of the transformer on the opposite side of the motor. So if either of these two short out um, the motor would stop running. So I'm going to change that black beauty. Now that is a 0.15 microfarad which is not an everyday value. It's a 600 volt but uh, it doesn't appear to be critical to calibration so I've got a this should be a 0.22 it's the closest uh, one I've got uh, 0.22 microfarad so we'll uh, try that and see how she does it held up for about 45 minutes with, before, which I think is an improvement. But uh, the motor still stopped, but I turned it off, gave it a minute 30, flipped it back on, and the dumb thing worked again. Urgh. I will get to the bottom of this, and it is capacitors, I know this. But I'm stubborn, and I'm going to try to do this one at a time, and just hit what we need, because this is not going to be something that has to be roadworthy. It's got to be working for two hours once a month, you know? Okay, so our Black Beauty's out and our yellow cap is in place of it. Um, I usually probably wouldn't use an orange drop in that position. I would normally use like a red poly or something, but I don't have any red polys of that value, that's why I use the orange one. The yellow one, I'm okay with those, really popular with radio guys, but yeah, I kind of like the red polys better. Whatever, it's a good cap, good caps. New caps, good caps, better than old caps that are fried. Um, the good all tested okay. I'm going to try to test the spray, although I don't know that the leads are the right size. But we'll see if we can find if that actually fails in the tester or not. But uh, we're going to button this back up enough to fire it up and let it run for another okay, hour. Okay, so I don't have the little box cover on, but you can see back here she's a running. See the orange drop back there and the yellow cap back there. They're in position. There's some tubes and a light bulb. Sorry to blind you. But it's working. Um, put our test tone up to it. See, you can strobe's in okay. So, still looks like it's going to work again, but the problem is, is not that it works or doesn't work. It's how long it works for before it craps out. I'm not eager to go after them big electrolytics because there's not a ton of room under the chassis to put axial or radial caps. That's a double 40 and a double 10. And as far as can caps that are currently produced, there's a double 50, which should be perfectly acceptable for a filter. Um, and a double 16, which uh, should be okay, I think, where that is in the circuit too. So, yeah, for some more filtering, maybe work the transformer a little more, but it's not out of whack. In fact, the ST1 actually called for either a double 40 or a double 50 in that position. And I think some years they shipped a 4050 instead of the 4040 that's in this. And it's just ba probably based on what's available. I'm just concerned about those caps that are the uh, uh, calibration caps. I don't want to mess with those. Okay, so with a little bit of fiddling, our 1.5 nanofarad, or I'm sorry, 1.5 microfarad, which is 150 nanofarads, checks out as 175 nanofarads with a 0.05 voltage loss. So, again, this capacitor looks healthy on this low voltage tester, but this is a 600 volt cap and it's probably seeing several hundred volts, so that's not particularly accurate. We'll see how we do after 40, 50 minutes like we did before we puked out. So, let's try not to puke out this time. Don't puke out, okay? Okay. It's going to be the electrolytics. I know it is. Got to survive an hour. Got to survive an hour. Okay, so here we are about an hour later. The only reason the strobo wheel looks like it's not running is because it's 
dead locked on to that annoying buzzy A reference pitch. When I talk, I make a jump. So, so far we're still working. Yay, I don't want to listen to that annoying reference pitch anymore. So, if the video ends at this point, it means that it did complete its hour because it's almost there. And I'm going to let it just keep on running for a while. But uh, I think we won. So, as far as those two motor run capacitors, there's one on each side of the motor. The point one, which is the good all or the bad all, according to a lot of radio guys, and the point one five Black Beauty. And the good all, probably changing both never hurts because they're both old, but it looks like. In the case of this Strobo tuner, the Black Beauty was the piece of duty. Hey, I made a dumb rhyme. That was stupid. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have one of these Strobo tuners and you need some help with it, you know, let me know. I'm not a, exactly an expert, but I do have schematics and things, and I'm not a total rook at this stuff. Not exactly an engineer, but coming along as a repair technician. Thanks for watching. Okay, welcome back to the bench one more time. The whole time I edited the video together, I just left this running because I had to know. And it still works. Yay. So, yeah, it's survived about two hours now, so I'm going to finally call this good and fixed. So, hopefully that helps anybody that owns one of these. And why did I call this the Led Zeppelin tuner? Well, just hang on. I'll tell you in a minute. Thanks for watching. Here's your historical information.